Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today I am going to be experimenting with painting the bokeh effect. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so today we are gonna be painting a snowdrop flower in the foreground, and then we're gonna be doing a bokeh effect in the background. So if you're not sure what that is, it's an effect that you can use when you're doing photography and you wanna make the background out of focus and it will catch light in certain places and make the light look like these like rings of circles. I'm gonna put a little picture here just to kind of show you what it looks like. Um, but I've been requested to do a watercolor tutorial of it. I've looked up a couple on YouTube, seen how people have done it, and we're gonna attempt it today. And what I found with this effect is that it looks best when you have something detailed in the foreground and then the bokeh effect in the background. So that's what we're doing today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a snowdrop. I am painting on Arches Cold Press watercolor paper today, taped down with painter's tape because we're gonna be wetting the background, don't want it to buckle. I have my Winsor Newton Professional watercolors, pencil, eraser, and then I also have my Emma Lefebvre brushes. I have a size six that I'll probably use for my uh, detail work. And then I have my mop brush or oval, wa oval wash brush and my size 12 for some of the background stuff. Okay. Also, sorry, uh, we're gonna be using masking fluid. Mine is by Winsor & Newton. And after we're done the snowdrop, we are gonna place the masking fluid over top so we can do the background. If you don't have masking fluid, you can just paint the background around the snowdrop as carefully as possible. Um, but that's what I'm gonna be using. Okay, so let's draw this flower. So I don't want it right in the center. I'm gonna have it slightly off to the center. And first I'm just gonna start off by drawing like the ground, the snow of where this flower is coming from. I draw the stem of the flower. It's gonna come up and it kind of makes like this hook like that. I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can see a bit better. I know it's super light. I'm gonna try and do it a little bit darker but I would recommend doing it lighter with your pencil. I'm gonna go and create the stem like so. And then it has kind of like this little bulb at the top, like so, like that. I've never actually painted one of these snowdrop flowers either before. So those are first for everything. And then I'm going to do the center first, which you'll only see a part of it, but I just kind of want to place where that's going to be. So it kind of looks like this. And then there's like these little, goes in like a V. And then the snowdrop has three petals. So we're going to do one coming out the front here. It's going to overlap that center. Two, overlapping the other side. And then three coming out the back. Like that. And that's the flower. Okay. So then we're going to just add some leaves. They have these long leaves. It's a little bit thicker Oops, at the bottom. I want to make it a little bit thinner at the top. Like that. And that's going to come out of the snow. And then this one I'm going to put going behind the flower. Like so. Okay? And if you want, you can erase. I'm just going to roll my eraser over a little bit just to lighten it. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your masking fluid on top. So for this, you're gonna need kind of like a, a brush that you don't care about. <laughs> um, also, I've heard that you can dip your brush into dish soap first before you put it into the masking fluid and that will protect the bristles. But this is just one of my cheaper brushes that I kind of use for masking fluid. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and all you do is you place the masking fluid over all the parts of the flower that you don't want the background to be painted on. Um, one thing I have learned, so I'm gonna be honest, I did this painting, or I attempted this painting already today on 
Paul Rubens watercolor paper on their 100% cotton paper. I did the drawing, I did the masking fluid, did the background, let it dry, and when it came time to take off the masking fluid, the masking fluid actually ripped up the paper and it ruined the painting. So I don't know what it is about the paper, but apparently some papers do not take well to masking fluid. So I don't know what it was, but it just didn't go well. So I would definitely do a test run on your, the paper you're using before you use masking fluid and you go through your whole painting before you discover that ju it just rips it up because I was super frustrated today when that happened. Um, and now I'm doing it again. So just give it a, a quick check before you add your masking fluid. So if you've never used masking fluid before, the consistency you want when it's dry is it's gonna turn kind of like this yellowish color and it's gonna be kind of almost like rubbery, like tacky to touch. So right now it's pretty pale yellow, but then it gets a little bit darker yellow. I also know that there are other masking fluid like pens. Um, I tried one a long time ago. It wasn't the greatest. I didn't like it the best, but it was okay. So far I really enjoy this Windsor & Newton kind, um, but that's all I can really base it on. So I'm just going over all the parts of this flower and you want to make sure it's not like too too thick where it's like a huge puddle of the masking fluid but also not too thin because you want it to be easy to remove. Okay and I'm going over the pencil lines because it will actually take up some of the pencil once you rip it up or take it off and I'm going to go over some of the snow here in the foreground. just so it doesn't run into the snow like that. And you can always do another flower if you want to. You don't have to do just one snowdrop. I'm just trying one because I'm hoping this will work out the best, but we'll see. All right, so now we go wash our brushes and we allow this to dry and we will come back when it's fully dry. Okay, so now that our masking fluid is dry you can tell like I said doesn't come up on your finger and it's a bit darker yellow um, and it feels kind of like rubber we can start the background okay so I'm going to take my mop or oval wash brush and I am going to wet up the sky background okay try not to be too hard around the masking fluid like you can definitely paint over it but just don't scrub with your brush because then it could come up just be gentle and apply the water in the background. And then we're gonna do the sky color. So you can pick whatever color you want to do for the background. Um, I'm gonna do um, like a grayish, bluish sky. So I'm going to grab, I just have some gray in my palette over here. I think it's like Payne's gray. I'm just gonna start off by placing it back here. Okay, I'm going to grab some cobalt blue as well, make it a bit more blue towards the bottom, and then a bit more gray towards the top. So I'm actually going to switch to my size 12 brush for this, just to grab, it's easier to grab more pigment. Some more blue. I'm just going to go back and forth. And I'm probably going to make it a bit darker as it goes up to the top. So a bit more Payne's Gray. Closer to the top, like so. And just kind of blend it in. Like I said, you can do the background whatever color. If you want more greens in the background, more whatever you want. All right. So once you feel it looks the way you want it, I'm actually going to just pull up some of this color. Try and make it a little bit lighter. Nah, it's not really pulling up right now. 
that's okay. We're gonna let it completely dry and then we will come back and start doing the bokeh effect. Okay, so now that we're done, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure you have a clean jar of water um, and piece of paper towel. And what you're gonna do, some people I've seen who do this have like a little circle stencil that they use, but I don't have that, so we are gonna make it work. Um, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna wet your brush. I have my size six brush. And you're just going to create some circles with your water. Make sure it's clean water, like I said. We're not adding any paint. We are basically just kind of scrubbing the background off and then you're gonna dab it with your paper towel and pull up that color. Okay, and it's gonna act like it's like snow almost in the background maybe falling, creating, like out of focus, that's creating this effect. And you can do them different sizes. I've seen, like I said, people do it with stencils to make them like perfectly round, which looks really cool. And this is all you do, basically. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll overlap one. Like that. You can have one like in between. Again, just be careful with how you're scrubbing around the, what's it called? The masking fluid that you're not taking it up. I might do some bigger ones back here. Just clean water and circles. And this is all there is to it, honestly. Super easy. I'm hoping it will look good <laughs> once we do the, the detail on the snowdrop. I haven't done this painting before. This is as far as I got with my last one. And then it didn't work because, like I said, the masking fluid ripped up my paper. I was so mad this morning. But it happens. I'll double up here. You can do some that are not as bright, so don't scrub it as much, so they're a little bit more dull than the others. Let's do a bigger one. I didn't want that one too, too dark. or too, too light. And just do however many you think you'd like to do. There's no right or wrong way to do this. There's no magic number. It's whatever you think. Change up the amount, the sizes. My son's talking in his sleep. I usually don't film at night, but today I am. All right. Okay. So there is our bokeh effect. All right. And now we are going to take up the masking fluid. And to do this, all you need is your finger and hope that it doesn't rip up your paper. Okay. And it should come off like this. Yeah, arches work so much better with the masking fluid. I don't know what was up with the other paper. So frustrating. Okay, you just pull it up. And like I said, it pulls up some of the... Whatever it's called. You know, the pencil marks. It's nighttime. <laughs> I'm like super tired. <laughs> okay. And there we go. So now we can start doing the detail of our snowdrops. So I am going to start with the greenery part. So the stem and the, the leaves. So I'm just going to grab some sap green. I'm going to try and bring it over to the other side of my palette so you guys can see a bit better. Hold on. So bring it over here. Mix it in with a bit of yellow. 
All right, I'm gonna take off some of that pigment and I'm just gonna start off with the leaf over here. And try and start with a light wash. And it's just popping out of the snow. So you can kind of do this like blunt end to it, I guess, like that. I don't want it on the background as much. So I'm going to try and take it up a bit. All right. Okay. And then I'm just going to add a little bit, oops, hair, <laughs> a little bit of darkness to it. I'm going to grab some hooker's green. Maybe a bit of purple, dioxazine purple, just to make it a bit darker. And I'm just going to... A bit more purple. A bit more green. A bit more purple. There, to make it a darker green. And I'm just going to add some shadow. Like that. I feel like I could add a bit more of the lighter green too. Like so. There's one leaf. Okay, let's do the other. So always start off with a light wash and we're just gonna go around the snowdrop petals and the petals would actually be casting a shadow on this leaf so I'm going to grab that dark green again and add it right under where the leaf would be or where the petals are, where the shadow would be is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a bit more of that darker green, like so. Like that. Do the top of the leaf, just gently going around those petals. And again, just a bit of darkness here. Like so. All right, and then the stem is a nice light green. Almost a bit more yellowy. Bit of the brighter green here, maybe along one side, and then that dark green right here on the bulb part. Start with a light wash, and then you can add a little bit more darkness. Grab a bit more of that dark. Just add it to the one side over here. Maybe a little bit of the darkness on this side as well. All right. 
So then I'm just gonna let that dry before I do the petals of this. Actually, hold on, there's a bit of green in the center here. So, hmm. Okay, so it goes in, so let me just mark where those petals are. And then it goes like in like this. There's a little bit of green in that center. I'm just gonna add just a tiny, tiny wash of green. that and like that all right and now for the snow the snow is not going to be completely white so what I want to do is add a little bit of like shadow so a bit of grayish blue so even the same color as the sky maybe um, and I'm just gonna create like it's a shadow coming being cast behind the snowdrop like that. I'm going to wash off my brush and I'm just going to blend it out. Wash off my brush, blend it out so it's not super harsh. Like that. Just keep washing off and blending it out. A little bit darker right there and then I'm just going to take a really light wash and just kind of go over parts of the snow even do a little bit of like dry brush action so my brush isn't that wet I'm just going to go back into the snow and I'm just going to kind of skim it against the snow so it has this like dry brush effect. Like so. Too much color. Just creating a little bit of shadow. I wash off my brush, dry it, just kind of blend it out doesn't have to be too perfect or anything. Don't worry about it. Just creating some texture in the snow. I grab a little bit more of my shadow color. Maybe a bit like that. I don't know. Just kind of winging it here. All right. And then we want to make sure it's completely dry before we do the, the petals right there, which we'll just use a light gray. Okay, so now that it's dry, we are going to do the petals like this light gray with just like hints of the white. Um, so I'm going to take some black. I'll just put it right here so you can see. Really water it down. Like wash off your brush. And then I'm just going to outline the petals. Okay, just leaving a little bit of white. And if you want to make sure it's not like super harsh lines, you can wash and dry off your brush and just kind of blend it out a bit. Like that. And then the one behind too, just a bit of gray. And then you can go in even a little bit darker with your black, tiny bit darker. Just add a bit more darkness to some of those areas like that. Mm. 
like that. Okay, so it still looks like a white flower, but it's gray. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, the green on some of these leaves, I'm just gonna, this one's in front, so I'm just gonna make it a bit sharper from the base. Maybe do some lines for a bit of texture. Like so, and then this one as well, just kind of cut it off. Like so. And then if you really wanted to just add a little bit like of white detail, I'm gonna use this Dr. Paige Martin's Bleed Proof White. I might grab some of that and just kind of add a little bit of textured snow. Totally up to you though, you don't have to do this part. And if you wanna add some snow in the foreground, some so it looks like that bokeh effect is the snow, you can take some of your white ink and then flick it. Maybe do some larger snowflakes. Looks good, like that. And there you go, there is your snowdrop in the snow using the bokeh effect for the background. So now I'm just gonna take off the tape so we can take a better look at it. And honestly, looking at it, I feel like almost some line work would look decent on this. I don't know, maybe just, I'm kind of winging it here. But I just feel like the detail might look better. A little bit of the center. Just to sharpen up those, our foreground here. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is a good idea or not. <laughs> We're winging it today. This is an experimental painting that I actually quite like. I think it turned out pretty nicely. And there you go. There's our finished painting. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day guys. Bye.